One of these days, I'll make a video on the newest episode of Falcon and Winter Soldier on the Friday it actually drops. I don't know though, I mean, things are finally happening again in the world of entertainment. But in any case, we now have episode four of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier titled, The Whole World is Watching. So now I talk about this new episode with spoilers. That's a spoiler warning. If you are not completely caught up on the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, then don't watch this video unless you don't care. All right, let's dive right in. Now, I love how this episode starts out because it starts out in Wakanda, which I was not expecting to see. Yeah, we're in Wakanda. We hear those Wakanda drums in the score. And this scene is a flashback six years prior to the events of this show, otherwise known as right before Infinity War. And it's Bucky being healed from his Winter Soldier conditioning. This is such a great scene right in the very beginning because Io is testing Bucky, throwing those Russian words at him. And for the first time, it feels like he's resisting them and he's tearing up. It's really like you can see it's a struggle for him. But then after it's all done, Io is like, yeah, you're free. And Bucky just has tears in his eyes. You can tell this is like a cathartic experience for him. I'm sure he's wanted this for a very long time, like decades, to be free from this mental conditioning. And so this smile on his face with these happy tears, you're just like, man, oh man, that's like the best acting I've ever seen from Sebastian Stan yet. It's just really good. So in this, you see what Wakanda and the Dora Milaje have done for Bucky. So now in present day, present day for the MCU anyway, when Bucky is once again approached by Io, she's like, uh, you guys broke Zemo out of prison. Wakanda doesn't like that. And yeah, Wakanda doesn't forget. You remember in the Black Panther movie when they were talking about Ulysses Claw? It's one of those things where Wakanda just never forgets the criminals who have done them wrong. That rule was set up in the Black Panther movie. So the fact that they show up here in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, that's just really good attention to detail on the MCU's part. Because I'm pretty sure none of us would have remembered that if the Dora Milaje had never showed up in this show. But the fact that they did totally makes sense with the rules that the Black Panther movie set up. That's just that's just smart. So now the Dora Milaje are coming for Zemo. Io tells Bucky, she's like, all right, we're gonna give you eight hours, then we're gonna come for him. So, all right. This episode focuses a lot on Carly Morgenthau. And man, I... I really gotta say, I know she's a villain, I know she's a terrorist, she has to be stopped. I mean, she's killing innocent people, she's bad. But I don't know what to say, I sympathize with her, she's a sympathetic villain. Whenever she's spitting out her reasoning during this entire episode, I'm like, I get it. I don't know. It just feels easy to sympathize with her. I mean, I'm no radical and I'm pretty sure I haven't been through what she has, but just the way this episode plays up her emotions, I don't know. I couldn't help but be like, all right, well, she shouldn't be killed. I think she can be reasoned with. And you know what? Sam Wilson thinks so too. We'll get to that. This episode also shows just how much of an asshole John Walker is. Or really just how unfit he is to be Captain America. Again, like he's a good soldier. He does get the job done. I feel like if he were just a soldier in the US military, like in the army fighting in a war, I'd be like, yeah, go that dude. Cause he would get the job done. Send him overseas. Cause he could be like the Punisher, you know? Just get the job done with no questions asked. It'd be good. But he's not Steve Rogers. He does not have have that humility. Really, if the second episode of this show succeeded in humanizing John Walker for you, which it didn't for me, but if it did for you, that's gone by the end of this episode. Yeah, now you see what I'm talking about. A few people in this episode talk about the effects of the super soldier serum, which yeah, it doesn't just make a person physically stronger, but as Erskine said in Captain America the First Avenger, it amplifies one's personality. Good becomes great, bad becomes worse. As Battlestar Galactica put it in this episode, it makes a person just more of themselves. As Zemo says in this episode, Steve Rogers was pretty much one in a million. There hasn't been another Steve Rogers. Cause Steve Rogers was just the best person ever. That's why he was worthy to lift Thor's hammer. Because he had a heart of gold and he was not afraid to show it. John Walker would not be able to lift Mjolnir. In fact, I feel like if John Walker were to reach towards Mjolnir, it would like physically move away from him. Yeah, I feel like that's what would happen. One of my favorite scenes in this episode is the scene where Sam sits down to talk to Carly because he does try reasoning with her. And this is where I was like, okay, Sam is definitely the person to be the new Captain America. Cause I feel like he acts like Steve Rogers would. He does what Steve Rogers would do. He sits down with her and tries to reason with her. And he brings up so many good points in that conversation. I feel like that conversation was going the best route it could have possibly gone. Cause Sam even says, yeah, Carly, I agree with your cause and your fight. I just can't get behind how you're fighting it. Which adds more to the Carly is a great villain aspect of the show. Cause she's a villain with a point. She has a cause with an argument to be made there. And Sam Wilson sees that. So this is one of those cases where words speak louder than action. Even Battlestar Galactica says that to John Walker. He's like, look man, if Sam can talk her down, it might be worth it. But John Walker in his haste is like, all right, you got 10 minutes, then I'm gonna storm in and ruin everything. And John Walker, man, 
<laughs> I mean, Wyatt Russell is so goddamn good in this show, because I haven't flat out hated a character this much in a long time. He's impatient, he's a wild card. Sam's conversation with Carly is going really smoothly, and then John Walker just bursts in and ruins it for everyone. Right when he came in and he was like, Carly, you're under arrest. I was like, son of a bitch, motherfucker. I knew he was gonna do that though, because I mean, how else was this gonna go? Really, this episode shows that John Walker is just ruining everything for everyone. He's the cause of a lot of problems now, as if we didn't have enough to deal with, with the Power Broker and Zemo and the Flag Smashers. Now we gotta deal with Rogue John Walker. I'll get to the end when I get to the end. So in this struggle, the Flag Smashers are running away, and they have these vials of Super Soldier Serum on them, on their person. But during the struggle, Carly drops them, and Zemo's there, and he's like, is this what I think it is? And Zemo stomps on the Super Soldier Serums and destroys most of the vials. So yeah, now all that Super Soldier Serum is just gone, which I'll be honest, that's probably a good thing. Again, Steve Rogers was one in a million, and Bucky is Bucky. He's fine. But for most people out there, I don't think taking the Super Soldier Serum would be the best idea. As we see with John Walker, who finds one vial of Super Soldier Serum that was not destroyed by Zemo, and so you're like, Oh, shit. So Walker takes that vial for himself, and you're like, oh, this isn't gonna lead to anything good. And so after that, Bucky and Sam and Zemo are hanging out. You would think they would have time to rest, and they do have some time. I like the brief conversation that Zemo has with Sam about if he were offered the super serum, would he take it? And Sam says no. That was cool. But yeah, they don't have much time to relax. I mean, Walker shows up with Battlestar Galactica, and they start arguing. But then pretty soon after that, the Dora Milaje show up, and they're like, all right, time's up. We're here for Zemo. And so they get into a big old scuffle, and man, these Dora Milaje are just beast. I love how they fight. There is just no beating them. I love how Sam warned John Walker. He's like, you might want to fight Bucky before you take on the Dora Milaje. I really feel like the Dora Milaje could take down anything. Like, they could probably take down the Hulk. Hell, they could probably take down King Kong. So yeah, these Wakandan warriors are just kicking everyone's ass. Even Bucky tries to defend Zemo. He's like, we still need him. And so during this whole scuffle, Zemo sees an opportunity. He's like, I'm just gonna slip away. So yeah, Zemo just straight up escapes. He's out of there. I'm pretty sure I know where he's going though. I'm pretty sure he's going to that Sokovia Memorial that he mentioned, because there is that shot in the trailer. So with two episodes left, I'm pretty sure that's where he's going. That should be interesting. I know he'll meet up with our group again because we haven't got to that shot yet. So yeah. Zemo's not done with us yet. But at the end of this fight, the Dora end up kicking John Walker's ass, which I'm pretty sure is what ultimately leads him to take the Super Soldier Serum. I mean, when he's going after the Flag Smashers, he busts through that door. Me and my friend, we were watching it. I was like, did he take the serum? For a few minutes there, neither of us were really sure. But then after a few minutes, we were like, oh yeah, no, he's super strong. He took the serum. And so there's another throwdown with John Walker and Bowstar Galactica and Sam and Bucky against the Flag Smashers. Again, through this whole episode, Sam is doing nothing but just trying to reason with Carly Quinn here. And once again, John Walker just ruins it for everyone. Because he shows up again and starts throwing down with the Flag Smashers, beating him around with his new Super Soldier Serum steroid strength. And it's during this battle in which Carly Morgenthau sends Battlestar Galactica flying into a pillar, and that kills him. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, that does kinda suck because I feel like he had more logic and reason than John Walker did. I don't know, he seemed to be the voice of reason in that conversation that he and John Walker were having about the serum, and now he's dead. Rest in peace, Lamar Hoskins. And of course, this is what sends John Walker over the edge. He goes absolutely ballistic, jumps out a window, does the superhero landing on a van, pins down this one random flag smasher, the one who actually said that he was a Captain America fan growing up, which is super sad and ironic now, because John Walker, the new Captain America, has him pinned to the ground, and he just goes apeshit, lifts up the shield, and just beats him to death with it. He stabs him in the chest. Man, that is brutal. Yup, this is roid rage at its finest. This is what it does, people. What John Walker didn't realize at the time is that this was broad daylight. He's in public, people are recording this with their phones. So yeah, John Walker, the new Captain America, just murdered someone in cold blood in front of God and everyone. The whole world is watching. Sam and Bucky show up to see it. Carly Morgenthau is there to see it. And that's where the episode ends. With that shot that's looking up at John Walker and you see the shield is just spattered with blood. That, that shot says a lot, let me tell ya. It's a great shot too. It's brutal. Oh yeah, but it's great. So yeah, now I feel like John Walker is another villain in this show. As if we didn't have enough with the Power Broker and the Flag Smashers. I do wonder what's gonna happen immediately after this. Like, how is John Walker gonna get out of that situation? He's gonna be on a revenge quest now. He's gonna wanna kill Carly Morgenthau and all the Flag Smashers. Again, proving what Erskine said about the serum in the first place. Bad does indeed become worse. If I had to guess how this is gonna go, there's probably gonna be a public outcry for John Walker not to be Captain America anymore, and somehow the shield is gonna go back to Sam and Bucky, because we still haven't seen that scene on the farm yet. Why do I feel like that's gonna be in the last episode? So yeah, now we just have two episodes left of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I like episodes three and 
and four, way more than one and two. So I feel like the last two episodes are really just gonna be awesome. I'm looking forward to seeing how this show ends and if it will have any impact on the larger picture of the MCU. Cause that I'm actually still not sure about. I guess we'll see though. So episode four of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier titled The Whole World is Watching. Have you watched it yet? What do you think about it? And where do you think the last two episodes might go from here? Whatever you think, go ahead and leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.